Hello, this Chem 1A lecture video serves as an introduction to concepts and terminology used when discussing redox chemistry. Through paying close attention to this video, you will be able to properly apply the terminology of redox chemistry and assign oxidation states to inorganic compounds. Redox chemistry, or reduction oxidation chemistry, is very common in our everyday life. As shown on this slide are four examples of where you may encounter redox chemistry. We have some iron chain rusting or oxidizing, a nickel cadmium alkaline battery, hair that's being bleached, and this last one, a much more complex but very important redox reaction, is uh, the reaction that allows photosynthesis to occur. So redox chemistry is the chemistry surrounding reactions in which the electrons are transferred from one atom to another. Fundamental to redox terminology are two definitions. Oxidation is defined as the loss of electrons, while reduction is defined as the gain of electrons. You can remember these definitions using the mnemonic oil rig where each of the letters in oil rig stand for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. Another mnemonic that students seem to prefer is Leo says Gur, lose electrons oxidation, gain electrons reduction. At this point, it's important to point out that redox gets its name from the fact that these are paired events. Whenever one atom is reduced, another atom must become oxidized. The electrons have to be directly transferred from one element to another. This brings us to two other terms, the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So an oxidizing agent is an element that causes another atom to become oxidized. So if it's causing one atom to become oxidized, it means it's causing that atom to lose electrons, and so then the oxidizing agent is gaining electrons, meaning it becomes reduced. Turning this around, a reducing agent causes the reduction, or the gain of electrons, in another atom. And so as it's causing that atom to gain electrons, itself is losing electrons, and so itself becomes oxidized. Here we see an example of a redox reaction between copper and zinc metals. In this reaction, we begin with copper sulfate, where the copper exists as copper two cations. And a piece of elemental zinc is added into a solution containing that copper sulfate. After the reaction is allowed to occur, we end up with the products of elemental copper and now the zinc is in its zinc 2 plus ionic form. So in this reaction, the copper went from having a 2 plus charge to no charge, and the zinc went from having no charge to a 2 plus charge. This means that the copper is gaining electrons. So the copper is reduced and the zinc, which loses electrons, is oxidized. It so happens that this reaction can only go in one direction. For instance, we cannot put a pure copper in a solution of zinc sulfate in order to create pure zinc and copper sulfate. This is because the different elements of the periodic table have a characteristic property called their reduction potential that describes whether this element acts more better as a reducing agent or better as an oxidizing agent. In the panel in pink on the right, we can see an example of the reduction potential of several metals. If we look carefully, we can see that zinc has a redox potential of negative 0.76. However, copper has a redox potential 
of positive 0.34. Simply put, this table can be interpreted by stating that the metals that are lower down on the chart, meaning have a higher positive value, tend to uh, become reduced, whereas the metals that are higher on the chart with the negative values tend to become oxidized. When describing the atoms within a redox context, we use a nomenclature of oxidation state or oxidation number to describe the transfer of electrons. For inorganic compounds, like ionic salts, the oxidation number is equal to the charge of the ion. However, our notation changes. While we might write the charge on a hydrogen ion as hydrogen with a superscript positive, the oxidation number of hydrogen is written as positive one. Similarly, copper two plus has an oxidation number of positive two. Notice that with oxidation numbers, we do include the ones um, and not simply the positive sign. Another example, here we see the fluoride anion. Fluoride has a charge of one minus. Therefore, its oxidation number is negative one. Nitride has an ionic charge of three minus and an oxidation number of negative three. So assigning oxidation numbers to ions, monoatomic ions, is relatively straightforward. We simply write the charge, but put the magnitude after the sign. Now oxidation states can also be applied to non-metal atoms when they're in covalent compounds. This is a little less straightforward. Below I show how the nitrogen and hydrogen within a molecule of ammonia actually can be assigned oxidation states. In ammonia, NH3, the nitrogen has an oxidation state of negative three, while hydrogen has an oxidation of plus one. Next, I will show you the rules for determining the oxidation states in these covalent compounds. The number one rule in assigning oxidation states to covalent compounds is that whichever element within the compound is most electronegative, that will be assigned an oxidation state with a negative direction, while its partner will have an oxidation state with a positive symbol. To know which element is the most electronegative, we look at the periodic table. Whichever element occurs either higher or further to the right is the most electronegative element. That being said, fluorine is the most electronegative element. So the following oxidation state rules apply whenever looking at covalent compounds. If we're dealing with a pure elemental substance, the oxidation number of the atoms within that substance are zero. For example, if we are dealing with elemental oxygen, each oxygen atom within that molecule would be assigned an oxidation number of zero. Second, the oxidation number of a monatomic ion is equal to the ion's charge. So this is what we were looking at in the last slide. So if we have O2 minus, then the oxidation number is negative two. Oxidation numbers for common nonmetals follow these general rules. Hydrogen can be combined with either metals or nonmetals. When it's combined with nonmetals, hydrogen has a positive one oxidation number. However, if it combines with metals, hydrogen becomes an anion and it is assigned an oxidation number of negative one. Most oxygen ions have a two minus charge. So most oxygen atoms in compounds have a negative two oxidation state. However, we will see this change 
in some compounds, such as peroxides, where each oxygen has an oxidation state of negative one, and superoxides, where the O2 minus ion gives a half negative charge to each of the oxygen atoms. Note that if oxygen were to be combined with fluorine, fluorine is further to the right on the periodic table than oxygen. So fluorine is more electronegative, so the fluorine would gain the negative value of the oxidation state, and the oxygen would be some determined positive value. Lastly, halogens will always have an oxidative state of negative one, unless it's one of the other halogens being combined with fluorine, because fluorine always gets the negative symbol being the most electronegative element. Okay, that was a lot. So let's look at some examples. Here we're going to look at two uh, carbon containing uh, covalent compounds, carbon dioxide and methane. Let's begin with the carbon dioxide. Our rules from the previous slide did not have any specific terms applied to the element carbon, but they did have a rule regarding oxygen. That oxygen has an oxidation state of negative two in most compounds. Therefore, in carbon dioxide, which contains two oxygen atoms, we have an oxidation state of negative four coming from the oxygens. The carbon plus the oxidation state of those oxygens must be zero since every balanced compound has an overall oxidation state of zero. Therefore, the carbon has an oxidation state of positive four. Now let's look at methane. Again, we don't have a rule for carbon, but we do have a rule for hydrogen. And that is hydrogen has an oxidation state of positive one when combined with non-metals. Carbon is a non-metal. So if we look at the oxidation state of the four hydrogen atoms, we end up with a positive four value. If we wish for the whole molecule to have a overall oxidation state of zero, then the carbon has to balance out that plus four. So the carbon has a oxidation state of negative four in this case. So notice that with organic compounds, the oxidation state of an element is not fixed. It depends on what that element is combined with. In our next video, you will see how to apply these terms when looking at chemical reactions involving redox chemistry. In our next video, you will learn about redox chemical reactions and see how these concepts can be applied. Bye till then.